houses of worship essential. I call upon governors to allow our churches and places of worship to open right now.
Good morning and welcome to Family Christian this morning, uh, members. Uh, happy to have you here this morning. Join us as we go into worship and welcome to the house of the Lord. Come into this house, magnify the Lord, lift up holy hands, our hearts in one accord. He is worthy, worthy of all. To this house, magnify the Lord, lift up holy hands, our hearts in one accord. He is worthy, He's worthy of all our praise. Yes, He is worthy, worthy of all our praise. And make a melody, sing unto the Lord, He has given us. Good morning, good morning. Uh, welcome to Family Christian. We thank you that you're joining us online. It's good to be in the Lord's house, isn't it? I would prepared something a little bit. I want to share a word just to get us started. And uh, this is what my heart had on uh, just the other day, and I wanted to write on it. So the coronavirus has changed many things in our way of life, uh, especially in our churches, how we operate. But, you know, it couldn't change the heart of our church and our desire to meet together. Um, it's just amazing to be in the house of the Lord. So I want to welcome you. And so I have uh, just a scripture that I want to read. It's Acts 20, verse 28. Pay, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God which he obtained through his own blood. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Brother Pat. We're going to continue to worship Jesus. And as Brother Pat has said, there is something about being in God's house. God brings joy. God brings peace. God receives our praise. He receives our worship. He receives our thanksgiving. So lift, let's lift our hands 
And let's declare joy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is joy in the house of the Lord. And there is joy in the house of the Lord. And there is joy. present. He's at your home. He's in your car. He's all over the place. But there is something about being in God's house where we can come to Jesus and come to his presence and lift our hands and worship and praise God. I just want to read a verse to you that says, God's blessing rests upon this house and And all who dwell within. May all who enter to be blessed. And I pray in Jesus name that as wherever you are, that you feel blessed, that you be blessed, and those of us that are here feel the same way because there's something special about being caught up in God's presence. So I just want you to lift your hands right now, and I want you to praise God with me. Whatever's happening, I don't know what you're facing right now, but I'm going to tell you something. God is bigger than that. 
He is the one that brings you peace. He is the one that gives you the miracle that you need. He is the one that will heal you of any illness or of any disease. He is greater than any doctor that can tell you, here's what's happening and here is the remedy. I want to tell you, God is your remedy. All you have to do is lift your hands, surrender to Jesus and say, God, here it is. I don't know what to do anymore, but God, I'm going to give it to you. And I want you to bless me so that I can tell others that you are the God that heals thee. You are the God that blesses us. You are the God that loves us. You are the God that encourages us. You are the God that comforts us. You are the God that is always here in your house. Whether we come prepared or not, you are here. So we want to be caught up in your presence this morning, God. We want to lift our hands. We want to sing every word in this song. And we want to give it to you, Jesus. We give it to you, Father. Hallelujah. Sing with us.
presence, Jesus. We never want to leave you, God. We want you to be next to us and beside us and close to us all of the time, Father. So I thank you, Jesus, for this time of worship that you give to us, Father. And as we sing this last song, God, we want to give it to you. We want to ask you with all of our heart, Jesus, to continue, Father, to bless us, God, with your love and your mercy and your grace. Let's sing this last song together. Oh, come to the altar. And I just want to share and thank those of you that came with us on Friday night at 7 o'clock. We came and anointed the church. We anointed the entrance and the foyer. I'm sure Pastor will talk more about it. And we anointed the altar. And I was so moved by God's presence. I knew his presence was here. And I'm so thankful that God never leaves their house. And as pastor was praying, one thing that, that really stood out, and that I'll remember, is that he said, God, when people come back, when our church comes back, when our, when our members come back, we pray against fear of COVID-19 in Jesus' name. But we pray, God, that as those that feel ill, that they walk in, God, and from the time they walk in the front entrance, Jesus, that you heal them in the foyer, even before they come into your, to your sanctuary, God, and that they grow a new and found desire to lift their hands and to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Because, God, we come to your house for one purpose. And that's to just praise you and thank you for being my God that never leaves me and he never forsakes me. And I pray, Jesus, that the altar here at Family Christian never be the same altar, God, that it has been in the past. That people, God, run to the altar and say, God, we thank you that the churches are open again. We thank you, Jesus, that you've given us a desire to be here, my God more than the desire to be at our favorite restaurant or any other store that we're missing out on, Father. Because, God, you are the God that I look for all the time, Jesus. And I pray that over our, our friends, God, and our members that come to your house, God. We miss them being here, God. And we just pray, God, that as they come back, Jesus, that they feel the same presence that we have felt here for the last nine or ten weeks. You have never left, God. You have been here, and I pray that they have felt the same presence. So let's sing this last song, and let's sing it with one purpose, church. Let's dedicate this altar to Jesus, and let's just say, God, we want this altar to be different. We want people to come and to say, God, I surrender to you. I'm sick, and I don't want to leave this house until you heal me. God, I'm sad right now and depressed. I don't want to leave until the joy of the Lord consumes my body and my mind and my spirit. So let's just lift our hands together and let's dedicate the altar to Jesus. We worship.
We thank you, God, that you're here. Your presence is made known. And we thank you, God, that every person that is here can agree with me. We have faith, God, that when we come back together, we will be ready and willing to continue to give you the honor and the glory. We will trust you. We will have faith in you. We will love you. We will love one another. We will uplift each other. We have missed that for so long. But we thank you, Jesus, because when we come back, we will continue where we left off, God, and we will be stronger. We will be better. We will be closer to you, Father. We will be ready to tell others there is a house here and it's called Family Christian. And if you come there, you will be healed. You will be changed. You will be restored. God will anoint you. God will use you because that's the God that I serve. This world is lost, God. And we need to be used by you, Father, as your disciples to tell others that is there Jesus in heaven that can change their lives, that they can give them a new life, God, until the day you come for us. So we rededicate this house to you, and this altar is yours, God. Do with it as you wish in Jesus' name. Let your presence, God, be so strong that all we do is we can come to your altar and fall here before you. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for this time. And my only prayer, God, is that you received this worship that we gave to you as a sweet gift because that is all my God deserves. He deserves to be praised. He deserves to be glorified. He deserves the best gift ever. We thank you for your blood in your name, I pray. And everyone together says amen. Give God a loud hand clap this morning. He deserves to be glorified. We thank you, Jesus. God bless you this morning, Pastor. Amen, 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 amen. How many love the Lord this morning? Say amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord with so many of you today. Um, just by way of announcement, um, the governor did say on, on uh, uh, well, the president said on Friday morning, let my people go. He told them to let the churches meet together again. Um, and uh, he told the, the state governors that if they didn't release the churches, that he was going to overrule them and he picked a fight with them but I want to thank God that our man, our governor had already been working with us Gavin Newsom was already working with with us for three weeks about reopening uh, churches to public uh, public uh, services to in-person attendance so Gavin was already um, Gavin Newsom was already working with us and I thank him for uh, the fact that he saw it fit to announce on Friday night that 
by Monday, he was going to release churches for in-person meetings. So this Monday, um, he's going to basically tell the counties and the cities, um, show us the plan, you know, let them, let them meet. Um, I spoke to our city leaders on, on Friday. Um, I told them this was coming down, that this was going to happen. I had found out from a state senator that this was going to happen. And I told them, how are you going to do it? And they, they're just going to follow the guidelines from the state. So we're thinking uh, we could have in-person meetings as early as Wednesday, Wednesday here at the church. So um, you guys know that um, Restoring Freedom was, was meeting. I don't know where, but they were already meeting. <laughs> so um, there wasn't more than 10, so that was, that was okay. So you got to play it by ear, follow the, follow the emails, follow the, the texts. Um, text me or call me to see if we'll be here Wednesday or, or if we'll be on Zoom. Um, what I'm planning is to keep the Zoom going and to keep the, the YouTube going. For those of you that don't know, because you're always here, we have done our uh, live stream for our sermons for about five to six years. Mario had set it up where my sermons were going live out um, for people that couldn't come. We had never done the worship until the last 10 weeks. We've been doing the worship live. Um, but we're kind of we kind of didn't have a big jump to just add the worship. Mixing it was difficult, but we got it going. We will not stop doing that. We will continue to do that. But something happened in here on Friday. There is no substitute for this place. There is no substitute. I know I've told you make an altar in your home, make an altar in your a closet. There is no substitute for being on your knees at the altar in the house of God. And something powerful happened here on Friday. I can tell you that the presence of God was here. Uh, people were speaking in tongues. It was uh, it was a really good prayer meeting. And I believe that uh, people are hungry to come back to the house of God, and God is hungry for people to come back to his house. Um, the plans that they have released uh, don't allow for children, and they don't allow for people 65 and older. So we are asking them, let family units come and sit together. Like, if you come in the same car, you can sit together. You and your family are together. Um, we'll do the six feet apart for, for everybody else which is, you know, leave a bench between you and the person in front of you. I uh, sit to one side of a bench, the other side of the bench, you know, alternate. Um, we'll make it safe, and, and I will help enforce it. If you saw in the video today, there were some people sitting together. Those people who rode in the same car or were there from the same house. So I know some of you are, are a, little, a little skeptical or a little worried, but I would tell you this. If you are worried about coming to church, just go to, just go to Home Depot, Lowe's, or Walmart today. Just go. See that and then say, I know my church can do better than this. Go with me to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Joe, I hate to do it to you, but there's people here, so I'll probably move around more than usual. <laughs> so you might have to follow me. When we um, last week we talked about Judah and how he was favored by God. I said it was because he stood for the righteousness of not killing his brother. He was willing to sacrifice himself so his next brother wouldn't be harmed. He led when God told him to lead, but mostly his mother spoke life over him every time she called his name. This week I want to talk to you about somebody who's more favored than Judah. Somebody who is more favored than Judah. And chances are the Wednesday night Bible study will go with today's sermon. So if you need to ask me, what's the Bible study on Wednesday? We don't go with today's Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 28, tells us of someone who was more favored than Judah. In Luke chapter 1, verse 26 and 27 and 28, it says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings you who are highly favored. Somebody say highly favored. The Lord is with you. Now, may the Lord bless the reading of his word. May he bless our time together in his word. Amen. I tell you, today's verse that we are considering uses the word highly favored when speaking of an individual named Mary. Last week when I told you Judah was favored, I told you he was favored because he was given the choices of the land. 
And when Simeon, the tribe of Simeon, went out to, to, to conquer the land, uh, Joshua told them, you can have some of Joshua's, uh, some of Judah's land because Judah has more than they need. They have more than they need. And I told you, people who are favored by God have more than they need. But here we have a woman who is highly favored by God. What does it mean to be highly favored? The Greek word here that is used to, to, to say the word favored, it could also be translated grace. You who have God's grace. You who have been endued with special honor. You who have been accepted. So Mary was shown grace by God. Mary was endued with a special favor, an honor from God. Mary was told by the angel Gabriel, God has something for you. What an honor to have God see something special in you and give you an assignment to further his kingdom. I believe those of you that are here today, and there's a lot more than we've had the last two weeks. I believe that you have been shown favor by God. You've come here today and God has protected you and God has healed you now. I want you to, uh, God has protected you and I said healed you because I believe there are more people that have this, this thing than, than they're letting on. But I believe that you are on a mission. You, you have an assignment. You have something that you feel God has in store for you. You said, I can't stay away. I can't stay away because I know that God has something special for me. I believe each and every one of you has, has a special assignment. You have been endued with a special honor. You have been shown grace. But I believe those of you that are here today in person, you had a duty today. And you needed God's favor to usher in the presence of God to this altar again. What happened here on Friday when we were here at this altar spread out and we were praying for God to bring his presence into his sanctuary. We were praying for God to bring healing into the foyer. When we put the oil, of, of, of the oil over the, the threshold of the door, what we were saying is, God, we need you here more. We need your presence here. We need to come here and know that you are here again. I believe those of you that were here today, your assignment was to come to this altar. That's why I asked you to come forward during that song and to put your presence here united with God's. I think God gave you favor today. God is still in the business of giving favor. In verse 23 and 24 and 25, we see where Elizabeth, the auntie of Mary, was shown some favor. When the time of service for her husband had completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant. Now, she was really old when she became pregnant. She had not been able to have a child. For five months, she remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, her older years, he has shown me his favor and taken away from my disgrace from the people. Now, I want you to understand what she said. She said, in my later years, God has taken away my disgrace among the people. Elizabeth sees God's favor as taking away shame, taking away guilt, and taking away disgrace. She felt ashamed because she had not given birth to a child. She felt that she was not as good as the other women that, that had had children. She felt, I have let my husband down. I have let my family down because I have not produced children. In her culture setting, she was looked down upon because she did not have a child. The people of that day saw children as a blessing from God. So if you did not have children, you had a curse from God. But later in the end, when she got to the end of her life, when she got to old age, God blessed her with a child. And she said, surely God has had mercy on me with this pregnancy and has removed my grace and my shame. I believe there are people with the sound of my voice today that need God to take away the disgrace. That need God to take away the shame. That need God to take away the sin that is binding them. I believe there are people walking around right now holding on to the past like they have done something wrong. I believe there are people within the sound of my voice that are carrying around something that God never intended them to be a burden on their shoulders. Some of you know what it's like to experience God's mercy and his grace and his favor by taking away shame, by taking away that sense of I have failed, by taking away that sense of I have done something wrong, I have let people down. I'm here to tell you this morning, the same God that showed favor to Elizabeth and took away her disgrace is here today, and he can take away whatever disgrace you're feeling this morning. 
Some of you know what it's like to have sweet fellowship with God and then have fallen away. To be given in to the things of this world. But I'm here to tell you this morning, just like he took it away, by showing her favor, he can do it for you. Many of you can say, I feel like I'm highly favored because I don't belong here, Pastor. The last place I belong is in the house of the Lord. I have done and I have said, I have thought and I have committed things that are embarrassing. Some of you know what it's like to be drunk and some of you know what it's like to be stupid drunk. If you can't say amen, say, well... Some of you know what it's like to be under the influence of strange substances and said things that just made no sense whatsoever. Some of you listening to my voice, you know what it's like to have the shame of not knowing what you did last night. Waking up in a strange place and saying, I don't know where I was last night. Some of you listening to my voice, you know what it's like to have done things under the influence of drugs and alcohol and quite frankly under the influence of the devil and you broke relationship with wives, with children, with loved ones and you had no control and you don't even remember. But I want you to know if you hear my voice this morning, if you're listening to my voice right now, there is a God who will grant you favor. He can restore you to your family. He can restore you to your son. He can restore you to your daughter. He can restore you to your wife. He can erase the shame of whatever it was you did by showing you his favor. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that he will pour out his favor on you right now listening to my voice. And he would restore to you that which the devil took away. Some of you are saying, Pastor, I don't want it all restored, just some of it. It was no good for me in the first place. And that's all right, too. God can restore what's good for you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, he would pour out his favor over your life right now. In the name of Jesus, pour it out on them so they can, be, they can give you honor, they can give you glory. God, I pray that you restore to them all that the enemy took away. And God, I pray they make a covenant with you this morning. I will be sure to give God all the credit. I will be sure to give God all the glory when he restores to me everything the devil took. There is no disgrace that God can erase. There is no shame in the God game. God's favor is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Verse 29 and 30, Mary found favor as well. Mary was greatly troubled. I read to you the first verse of 28, when the angel says, do not, do not be afraid, God has found favor in your life. Mary was greatly troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. Now, when Gabriel tells Mary the Lord is with her and that she is highly favored, she gets scared. In fact, scared is not even a strong enough word. He says she was greatly troubled. Some of you know what it's like to come into the presence of the living God and be troubled because you know something ain't right. You know there's something amiss. Something is not the way it should be. And the Lord has visited me. Don't ever reach the point in your life where you think you deserve the presence of God. Don't ever get to the point in your life where you think you deserve God to visit you. You are lucky to be in the presence of God. And you should fall down on your face in trembling honor and fear and say, I am not worthy of you, God. Mary was trembling. Why? Because she was holy. Holy people know it's an honor and a privilege to be in his presence. Holy people know there better is one day in the house of God than a thousand elsewhere. Holy people understand the words. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Some of you know it's a privilege to be in his presence. Some of you know it's a privilege to be in his house. Why? Because I don't deserve none of it. She didn't say a word, so she must have, she must have, shrugged her shoulders or maybe gave a different look in her eyes but the Gabriel said to her don't be afraid I don't blame her at this point in her life what has she really done what had Mary done to this point in her life to deserve a presence of God what has she done she's in her early teens what has she done 
to deserve a visit from the angel Gabriel. And let me tell you something. Don't take it lightly if the angel Gabriel shows up. Do not take it lightly when an archangel shows up. I picture her there, a shy, quiet, young teen that has led a mundane life without any significance of happening to speak of in it. I don't believe she did anything special to this point to deserve to be seen as highly favored. Mary was not favored, however, by what she had done. How many of you thank God that he doesn't hold against us what we have done? Mary was highly favored because of what she would do. Mary was highly favored because of what she would proclaim. Mary was highly favored because she would believe that God said, I will be with you and you will be the mother of Jesus. Some of you can look back at your life and say, preacher, preacher, man, I've not done anything to, reserve, to deserve the favor of God. Like Mary, God, I want to tell you, God's favor in your life is not retroactive. It's future dividends. God bases his favor on our future performance, not our past failures. God gives us favor so that we may make him known, not tell people what we did. He will invest his favor. In what we are capable of doing, not what we were capable of messing up. Some of you have been thinking, I, I can't have God's favor. Look what I did. I can't have God's favor. Look how I let this person down. I can't have God's favor. I disqualified myself. I'm here to tell you this morning, quit looking back. God's favor is not back there. God's favor is before you. It was what she said. Truly let it be done to me as you have said. It wasn't what she had done. She was a young teen. She'd done nothing. God's favor is on the life of those who are willing to say, here I am, use me. Elizabeth was no different. She even knew she wasn't worthy of God's favor. In Luke 1, 39 through 40, 45, Mary's now pregnant. She goes to her aunt's house. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. Elizabeth is her aunt. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greetings, the baby leaped in her womb. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will, wear, you will bear. But why am I so favored? You see, that's the attitude. Why am I so favored? That's the right attitude. Why am I so favored? That the mother of my Lord should come to me. As soon as the sound of your greetings reached my ears, the baby in my womb looped, leaped for joy. Blessed is she who is believed. There, there, there it is. That's why Mary was favored, because she believed. Do you believe this morning that the Lord will fulfill the promise to you? She was blessed because she believed that God would fulfill the, the, the promise that was given to her. Mary was favored for merely believing that God would do what he said he would do. Some of you are missing out on all the things that God wants for you because you don't have faith to believe that he can or that he will do what he says he will do. You've been let down. You've been let down so many times. You don't want to get your hopes up again. I'm not going to get my hopes up that he's going to restore my family. I'm not going to get my hopes up that my children are going to serve the Lord. I'm not going to get my hopes up that I'm going to be the head and not the tail. I'm not going to get my hopes up that he's going to take care of me. I'm not going to get my hopes up. I'm here to tell you this morning, when you run out of hope, that's where God begins. But some of you have not received a word from the Lord because you have no idea what the word of the Lord is. Nobody said amen. When I pause and I look for a response, a good one is well, because well means he's preaching to somebody. Well means I don't know what he's talking about. And well means well. Some of you don't know what the word of the Lord is for you. You've not received a word from God because you haven't got into the word of God. I need a mic that doesn't work, Daniel, so I can drop it sometimes. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say it again because somebody just fell off the couch. Somebody just fell out their chair. 
Some of you just spilled your, your Cheerios on your pajamas. Some of you have not received a word from God because you have not gotten into the word of God. You cannot get what you don't know. You cannot get what you don't know. How can you get a word from God when you don't know the word of God? I thank Daniel who gives me a word. Every once in a while, Daniel has a word. Brother Pat, Pastor Pat always has a word. Thank you. I appreciate your words. You guys are always positive and encouraging. My wife, she has words for me. Sometimes they're not positive or encouraging, so I ignore her. But, but Pat and Daniel, you guys always go out of your way to make sure that I hear something encouraging. I appreciate that. But as much as I love you guys, it doesn't compare to what I read in the scripture. And I say, Dad, that one's for me. I grab my Bible. I hold it up against my chest and I say, this one's for me. So you need to grab it. You need to read it and begin to highlight promises that are found on the word of God and start declaring them over your own life. Mary and Elizabeth were favored because they believed God's words. So you need to read it, believe it, proclaim it, and receive it. And I'm going to end it right there. You guys don't deserve point number two. My wife just said, give it to them. I don't know, dude. I don't know if they're ready for word number two. <laughs> Joey David, should I give them point number three? You think, yeah? Sister Yolanda, Eliza, yeah? Sister Peggy, Sister Quantuifa, all right? All right? Hermano, Hermano Juan, Hermano Pedro, all right? I'm believing. I'm seeing what's not there. Hallelujah. going to leave it with you. I'm not going to unpack it. I'm not going to put the cookies on the bottom shelf so that you can understand it. I'm just going to read it, and you'll either get it or you won't. But I'm going to end with the verse. I'm not going to break it down. All I want to tell you is this. Jesus finally began his public ministry. And the first thing he did is he went into the house of God. <laughs> if you saw the stories on Saturday on any news app, the stories said, what did people do with their first day of freedom? Where did they go? They showed people at the park. They showed people at restaurants. They showed people at ice cream shops, at coffee shops, because that's what they do. You know when the first place we went? Here. Here. Now some of you are law-abiding citizens. Cuando te conviene. And some of you right now are law-abiding citizens. You're like, Pastor, I'm not going to go anywhere because I'm going to follow the rules. And Tuesday around noon or one is when they're going to lift the stay-in-place order in Fresno City. In the name of Jesus. The first place you visit is where your heart's at. <laughs> Joey called me two weeks ago. Joey says, Pastor, are you serious? We could come to the church? I go, yeah, but if we get caught, you're security, okay? <laughs> he goes, I don't understand, Pastor. I've been going to work every day. He goes, I don't understand why I can't be in the house of God. I said, bro, I never closed that door. It's open right now. Not for any other holy reason than this. I got to see my car to make sure they don't break into it. <laughs> Let's just be honest. This is the first place you're going to go with your newfound freedom on Tuesday. Whereas, no. After we were here Friday night, I told my wife, I want to take you to dinner. So we put the top down on Angelique's convertible. And my wife and I went to the best Mexican restaurant in town, Rubio's. And on the way there, we didn't see 10, 20 people. We saw hundreds in 
downtown clothes on both sides, eating at restaurants outside. Me and my sister saw 10, 20, 30, 40 people in line at an ice cream parlor. 30, 40 people. I got so excited, I called my buddy Jim Frank. I said, hey, Jim, Clovis is popping, man. People are out. He goes, I'm still at church. There's nine in South Park. I want you to understand something. Where you go will show us what you're trusting in. I'm just going to leave you with a verse. And you're either going to get it or you don't. The first time Jesus was going to start his public ministry, he didn't go to the river. He didn't go to the lake. He didn't go to the mountain. He didn't go. To, no, 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 no. Jesus went to the house of the Lord. In fact, when he was 12 years old, he was caught. At the house of the Lord for three days straight. His mom caught him. She found him and says, where you been? He goes, woman, don't you know I got to be in the house of the Lord? I have to be in my father's house. But when he started his public ministry, he's 30 years old. In Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. He could have read anywhere. He could have told any story. He could explain creation. What he decided instead was to say these words. Luke 4. 18 and 19. The spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he has anointed me. To proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. And recovery of sight for the blind. To set the captive free. And to proclaim the year. Of the Lord's favor. He could have read anything. You want to know what I mean by that? You got to come back Wednesday. Close your eyes. Let's say the Lord. Bow your head. You need to ask yourself, am I favored or am I not? If I, am I protected by the lamb's blood or am I not? Do I desire to be at Olive Garden more than the house of God? Am I yearning for the smell of Starbucks or the anointing oil at the altar? You have a decision to make next Sunday. And some of you on Tuesday. Somebody just texted me. So does that mean the church is going to be open Tuesday at 1? You'll have to be here to find out. Are you favored or not? Is this the year of God's favor or isn't it? Look back over the last 10 weeks and ask yourself, was he with us or wasn't he? If you're sitting here this morning and hearing my voice and you have not given your life to Jesus, I pray you pray the sinner's prayer. And you say, I need your favor. And I know that requires my repentance. Forgive me of my sins, God. Come into my heart and fill me with your spirit. I want to experience your favor, but I know i got to change. Help me to change what I cannot change. Give me strength to change what I can. Lord, I pray that they would enter their information right now in the comment section. So one of the leaders could call them this week. Lord, thank you for your people that have heard this sermon today. And I thank you that so many came out today, one week ahead of schedule, but they're here because they wanted to be in the presence of God. Thank you for the time we had at this altar. Lord, we pray blessings over your people, blessings over your church, over your city, over this nation, over this state, over your creation right now. Fill it with your presence. Bring healing where it's needed, mercy where it's required, and forgiveness where it's confessed. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. May the Spirit of God grant you favor from this moment on. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. The announcements are on there, and how you can give to this ministry is on the screen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. And thank you to all of you in the house of God today. You made me preach different.